Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. I am now done with the solo coaster, The Diary of Me by R. Kelly biography. And that segment is on the playlist on the channel. If you haven't been able to listen to the podcast, they're broken down in 20 minute increments. And it's for your listening pleasure to be able to go through the book and find some key points that can validate what has taken place with R. Kelly. Now we're moving into the appeal motion that was filed by Jennifer Bonjean, attorney Bonjean, on February the 17th, 2022. And it was done in the U.S. District Court of Eastern District of New York in United States of America versus Robert Sylvester Kelly, also known as R. Kelly, the defendant. Um, the defendant, Robert Kelly's mo no notice of motion for a judgment of acquittal. Please take notice that upon the accompanying memorandum of law, defendant Kelly through counsel hereby moves for a judgment of acquittal. Dated February 17th, 2022, New York, New York. Respectfully submitted by the Jennifer Bonjean Law Group, PLLC, 750 Lexington Avenue, 9th floor, New York, New York, 10022. And the case number is 19 CR 286 Amendment. So we are going to review a little bit of this. Um, certificate of Service states, I, Jennifer Bonjean, an attorney at law, certify that I filed defendant's notice of a motion for judgment of acquittal and memorandum of law in support of the motion via ECF on February 17th, 2022. At first it was denied, but then it was granted because it was so sad that they would try to make a 65 page document um, inadmissible um, just because of the length of the document itself but it was therefore afterwards granted so we're gonna break this down in 20 minute increments i'm going to talk a little bit i am going to allow um, my recorder to record uh, this through a voice app so you can hear it more clearly but we're going to go step by step, okay? So let's get started. United States District Court, Eastern District of New York. X. United States of America. 19 CR 286. Versus. Notice of Motion. Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as R. Kelly. Defendant. X. Defendant Robert Kelly's Notice of Motion for a Judgment of Acquittal. Please take notice that, upon the accompanying memorandum of law, Defendant Kelly, through counsel, hereby moves for a judgment of acquittal. Dated, February 17, 2022. New York, New York. Respectfully submitted. S. Jennifer Bonjean Jennifer Bonjean Bonjean Law Group, PLLC 750 Lexington Avenue, 9th FL New York. Introduction. In Fitzgerald v. Chrysler Corp., 116 F3D 225, 226 to 27, Chief Judge Posner cautioned that where a statute is broadly worded in order to prevent loopholes from being drilled in it by ingenious lawyers, there is a danger of it being applied to situations absurdly remote from the concerns of the statute's framers. Such is the case here, where the government used both the racketeer influenced and corrupt organization's statute and the man act in a manner never previously conceived or carried out. Invigorated by an influential social movement determined to punish centuries of male misbehavior through symbolic prosecutions of high-profile men, the government brought a RICO prosecution against the defendant that was absurdly remote from the drafter's intent. Stretching the liberal construction clause well beyond the intent of Congress, the government constructed a RICO theory of prosecution designed not to effectuate the purpose of the RICO statute, but to prosecute the defendant for alleged misdeeds going back decades without pesky statutes of limitations obstacles. Adding to its history of Celebrity Man Act prosecutions, the government extended the broad language of the Man Act to conduct it never intended to remedy. 
While the Mann Act may be an effective tool for combating human trafficking, it was not designed to punish sexual misconduct like that alleged against defendant. Where defendant's alleged transportation of females was incidental to his travels as a world-renowned performer, he is not guilty of Mann Act violations. If the government intends to prosecute Mann Act violations in the fashion it did here, it might consider investigating the many influential, wealthy, mostly white, corporate leaders who frequently arrange travel for paramours who later conclude that the experience was less than pleasant. Now let's stop there. So here we are hearing that the RICO Act, the Mann Act, was not taken into account the way the law had directed that case to be. So that means that somebody took advantage of the situation, whether it was the judge, whether it was the misunderstanding of the prosecutor, somebody somewhere took this action and misinterpreted its content. So that right there shows that I believe Jennifer did a good job right there. I think that was sufficient to start off her motion with. All right, let's go here. A detached and unemotional review of the evidence in this case shows that the government presented an overabundance of bad character evidence to compensate for its insufficient proofs of the specific elements of RICO and the Mann Act. Accordingly, this court must acquit defendant of the verdicts of guilt entered against him. Hmm. Relevant must acquit the defendant of the verdicts of guilt entered against him. So this right here is going to save him, even if not for just a new trial, if not an acquittal and an overturning of the case altogether. So she also did a great job right there as well. Let's keep going. The government charged defendant with one count of racketeering based on 14 predicate acts and eight standalone counts of violations of the Mann Act that were also charged as racketeering acts. With the exception of Racketeering Act 1, alleging the offense of bribery, the charged offenses involve conduct alleged by five women, Jerhonda, Jane, Stephanie, Sonia, and Faith. The jury returned a verdict convicting defendant of all charged counts but acquitted him of those racketeering acts related to Sonia. Given the length of the record, defendant will incorporate relevant facts into the argument sections as appropriate. Argument. This court must set aside the verdict of guilt entered against the defendant and enter a judgment of acquittal where the government presented insufficient evidence of the offense of racketeering and all man act violations. Federal Rule of Criminal Procedure 29 provides that, if the jury has returned a guilty verdict, the court may set aside the verdict and enter an acquittal. A court can enter a judgment of acquittal on the grounds of insufficient evidence, only if, after viewing the evidence in the light most favorable to the prosecution and drawing all reasonable inferences in the government's favor. It concludes no rational trier of fact could have found the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, think about it. Since when do we use un undocumented testimony to someone and charge him with a life sentence. Since when do we do that? There were nobody who went and and used the information to find out if there if if this information was actually true. So they just overstepped their boundaries. I think they just wanted to trap him up as we all know, and this is not anything new that we have not heard over the course of um, the R. Kelly trial. Mm. So reasonable doubt, <laughs> wow, let's listen. As set out in detail below, defendant's RICO conviction cannot stand where the government failed to prove the existence of an enterprise, the activities of which affected interstate commerce and a pattern of racketeering activity. Moreover, insufficient evidence existed to prove each and every element of the charged Mann Act violations by proof beyond a reasonable doubt. I. The government failed to prove defendant guilty of the offense of racketeering. This court must acquit defendant of the offense of racketeering where the government failed to prove defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of each and every element of the offense. 
The government effectively swamped the jury with bad character evidence that was guaranteed to produce a guilty verdict, but its mm. proofs on the charge defenses were insufficient as a matter of law. Ignoring the distinctly economic legislative history of the RICO statute, the government brought a RICO prosecution against defendant, not to remedy widespread criminal activity of an enterprise, but to punish one man whose alleged crimes could no longer be prosecuted by state and local agencies. The government's belated interest in protecting defendants' alleged victims does not justify application of the RICO statute to alleged private, sexual misconduct of the defendant, even if some of that conduct could have been timely prosecuted by local authorities long ago. As a reminder, RICO's primary purpose was to combat organized crime by prosecuting the highly diversified acts of a single organized crime enterprise under a RICO's umbrella. The overarching goal of the statute was to curb the infiltration of legitimate business organizations by racketeers. In its statement of finding and purposes accompanying the RICO statute, Congress declared the following. The Congress finds that organized crimes in the United States is a highly sophisticated, diversified, and widespread activity that annually drains billions of dollars from America's economy by unlawful conduct and the illegal use of force, fraud, and corruption. Organized crime derives a major portion of its power through money obtained from such illegal endeavors and syndicated gambling, loan sharking, the theft and fencing of property, the importation and distribution of narcotics and dangerous drugs, and other forms of social exploitation. This money and power are increasingly used to infiltrate and corrupt legitimate business and labor unions and to subvert and corrupt our democratic processes. Organized crime activities in the United States weaken the stability of the nation, economic system. Harm innocent investors and competing organizations, interfere with free competition, seriously burden interstate and foreign commerce, threaten the domestic security, and undermine the general welfare of the nation and its citizens. And organized crime continues to grow because of defects in the evidence-gathering process of the law inhibiting the development of the legally admissible evidence necessary to bring criminal other sanctions or remedies to bear the unlawful activities of those engaged in organized crime and because the sanctions and remedies available to the government are unnecessarily limited in scope and impact. It is the purpose of this act to seek the eradication of organized crime in the United States by strengthening the legal tools in the evidence-gathering process, by establishing new penal prohibitions, and by providing enhanced sanctions and new remedies to deal with the unlawful activities of those engaged in organized crime. As the court held in Reeves, the liberal construction clause was not an invitation to apply RICO to new purposes that Congress never intended. The government clearly exceeded those limits with this prosecution as evidenced by its failure to prove the charge defense of racketeering. To sustain a conviction for RICO, the government must prove that the defendant, through the commission of two or more acts constituting a pattern of racketeering activity, directly or indirectly invested in, maintained an interest in, or participated in, an enterprise. The activities of which affected interstate or foreign commerce. 18 U.S.C. Section 1962 the activities of which affected interstate, the government's proof did not establish an enterprise. The government's case was doomed from the start where it failed to plead and prove an enterprise. An enterprise includes any individual, partnership, corporation, association, or other legal entity, and any union or group of individuals associated in fact although not a legal entity. 18 U.S.C. Section 1961 the United States Supreme Court has defined a RICO enterprise as a group of persons associated together for a common purpose of engaging in a course of conduct. United States v. Turkett, 452 U.S. 576, 583. See also Boyle v. United States, 556 U.S. 938, ID. At 100, the enterprise is neither the individual defendant nor the pattern of racketeering activity, Rather it is, an entity separate and apart from the pattern of activity in which is engaged, and must be alleged and proved separately. However, there must be a nexus between the enterprise and the racketeering activity that is being conducted. United States v. Indelicato, 865 F2D 1370, 1384. Furthermore, the RICO enterprise must have an ascertainable structure separate and distinct from the pattern of racketeering activities. Turkett, 452 U.S. at 583. Finally, for Section 1962 purposes, the person charged with a RICO violation and the alleged enterprise must be separate and distinct from one another. 
This requirement flows from the statutory mandate that a person who engaged in a pattern of racketeering activity must be employed by or associated with the enterprise. An entity cannot simultaneously be the enterprise and the person who conducts its affairs, permitting that would be tantamount to permitting an entity to associate with itself. Ben, common purpose. In its third superseding indictment, the government alleged that the defendant, his employees, and other members of his entourage constituted the enterprise for RICO purposes. According to the government, the purpose of the enterprise was to promote defendant's music and his brand, recruit women and girls to engage in illegal sexual activity with the defendant, and produce pornography, including child pornography. The government did not allege that the enterprise constituted a legal entity, but rather an association of individuals. As held in Satinwood, Supra, for an association of individuals to constitute an enterprise, the individuals must share a common purpose to engage in a particular fraudulent course of conduct and work together to achieve such purposes. Thus, for the government to establish an enterprise here, it was required to prove that defendant, his employees, and entourage came together with the common purpose of recruiting women and girls to engage in illegal sexual activity and produce pornography, not merely the broader purpose of promoting defendant's music or brand. Assuming the defendant's employees and entourage did share a common objective of promoting defendant's music, that objective had no nexus to the underlying racketeering activity. In Delicato, 865 F2D at 1384. Defendant did not go through all the trouble of becoming a world-famous R&B singer for the purpose of engaging in illegal sexual activity, even if his job put him in proximity to women. The government cannot end-run the common purpose requirement by identifying a broad objective of the enterprise unrelated to any fraudulent activity with no nexus to the racketeering activity. The government's evidence of an enterprise was insufficient because it failed to establish that defendants' employees and entourage shared the common purpose of recruiting women to engage in illegal sexual activity with defendant that included creating pornography. Notably, the government does not define illegal sexual activity. But based on the predicate acts charged the government contends that defendants' employees and entourage shared an objective of ensuring that defendant had his sexual needs met by women while at home and while traveling was able to control these women to engage in sexual conduct the government deems abusive, was able to videotape his sexual activities with these women, and could expose his sexual partners to herpes. To be clear, the government contends that making sure that defendants' sexual needs were met was the objective of the enterprise. Concededly, the government offered evidence that defendants' various employees carried out some tasks that related to connecting the defendant to women with whom he had a personal, even sexual, relationship or with women whom he was interested in having a sexual relationship. These tasks included providing defendants' phone number to women who attended his concerts, inviting women to after parties, arranging for travel for defendants' female guests, and ordering food for those guests while they visited his property. However, the record is devoid of evidence that the members of the enterprise acted with the common objective of ensuring that defendant engaged in illegal sexual activity. It is true that RICO does not have a mens rea requirement beyond what is necessary for proving the predicate crimes. Burner Corp v. R.A. Bruner Company, 133 F3D 491, 495 but where the government's evidence of an enterprise centers on its claim that the associated in fact members shared a common purpose of ensuring defendants' illegal sexual activities. The government must offer some evidence that the members of the enterprise knew that their actions were promoting not just legal sexual activities but illegal sexual activities and the production of pornography. Put in terms expressed in Satinwood, the government was required to show that the individuals who made up the enterprise shared a common purpose to engage in a fraudulent course of conduct. To share a purpose requires the members to agree on what that purpose is. So we are going to stop right there. I need you to really, really think about what is being said in this motion right now and how everything was void all the the um, conviction clauses everything was is void there is nothing standing towards him because everything regarding the rico act was used inappropriately in the court of law in a court of a the, the federal law you know so maybe they just didn't know what their rules were 
their guidelines were. And this is why we need a overturning of the conviction or a new trial or an acquittal altogether. We just need to just start over again and then just have a civil action suit that's done. And in a civil action suit after this criminal trial has been acquitted, it's going to be very difficult for those women to prove that any of this stuff happened because of the fact that the statute of limitations are not going to allow them to have the proof other than just my word against yours. So what are you thinking right now? Um, mm. Welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we really go deep and research the topics, the the laws, and, and just follow the the court proceedings as they go down in history. And there are so many people in federal, state, and local jails and prisons and institutions that this has happened to. So we need a better criminal justice system. We really, really do. Um, so we'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be doing my uploads for the Solar Coaster continuance of that book, but I had to get this out and we'll see you on R. Kelly Appeal TV with the remainder of the motion reading next Sunday, 6 p.m. God bless. And as always, keep it one.